Right. All right, there are times when there's certain events going on in our country and state which transcend you know, the condo stuff that goes on on this show, and we need to talk about that. New segment from now on, Glazer's Gaze. So let's start the first episode of Glazer's Gaze, and this week there was a senseless death of a 31-year-old police officer in New York by, shot by a guy with several violent, uh, violent crimes. That's because New York uh, went after the defund the police movement, and we got to make sure this never happens in Florida. This hero leaves behind a young wife, a young child, and it was great to see President Trump go out there this week and pay his respects. Can't say the same about President Biden, who was sitting at a $10,000 a plate dinner. But forgetting our current president, I've said this before on the show, we can talk all day about condo and HOA rules, but our community means nothing if it's not safe first. You got to keep the bad guys off the street. The legislature in New York fails all the time. Can't let that happen here. Can you imagine with a, a guy with 24 priors, 24 priors killed this 31 year old hero? You know, at some point, doesn't a person lose the right to live among us? You know, after robbing, raping, that's, that's all they know. How many arrests does it take? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50? This happens in our great cities all the time, like New York, Chicago, LA. And if Florida is going to remain the great state that it is, we always need to vote in legislatures, legislators, Republican or Democrat, who understand that the first obligation is safety to the citizens of this state. And we got to make sure, must make sure, that we never get to a situation where robbers and rapists in this state can have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 arrests. It simply can't happen. They got to go way before that. And again, when I know when I vote going forward, that's the thing that I want to be looking for. I want to see which legislator is going to guarantee safety for myself and for my family first. Again, regardless of which party. I had a case a couple of years ago, and uh, I was trying to kick somebody out of a unit, actually a, a unit that they owned. It was their homestead property. And this was a crazy guy who went around tasing people, who went around beating women up, um, all kinds of crazy stuff. This guy thought he was in the mafia, quite frankly. And um, I tried to kick him out and I got restraining orders. And this guy had like Bentleys and he thought he was rich. He thought he was a mobster. And at the hearing, his two witnesses against me were two hookers. Rob, you had to see that cross-examination. That was fun, I got to tell you. So um, my point being, we got a final, uh, final ver judgment against him, kicking him out of the property completely. Now, what, of course, does the guy do? He takes an appeal. Can't kick me out of my home, right? And I'll never forget, never forget the first judge on a three-judge panel starts the hearing by saying, you know, I woke up this morning and I took a look at, like, the judicial canon of ethics or whatever, and he says, you know what's at the top of the list? as by a job as a judge to preserve the public safety okay, that was he thought that was his number one role as a judge was to preserve the public safety so how did he rule even though this was this guy's homestead on appeal affirmed affirmed we got this person kicked out of their home for life forever because this judge knew that if you send the person back think just think of what I'm saying if you send the person back they're going to do the same thing again, just like what's happening again in New York. It used to freak me out when I was, I worked for the Brooklyn DA's office through college, actually, not even law school. And I would pick up a rap sheet of a defendant and I would see 10, 20, 30, I'm turn, turning the pages. And I'm going, this is not possible. How is this human being still on the street? And here we have a situation, Rob, in New York where a, a, a young guy was killed by someone with 24 prior arrests, nine of which were for violent felonies. And again, how in the world is this guy still on the street? And again, like I said, we can talk about our communities and our rules and our regulations, but doesn't it actually have to start with safety for our families, period? Absolutely. Everything we talk about means nothing if our homes are not safe. So. The point being today, we can never, ever, ever let Florida become what's happened, what's happened to the big cities of the Northeast. That's why we moved here. Don't ever, ever elect legislators who don't realize that it's number one, their number one job 
is safety first. We've got safety. We can accomplish the other tasks as we go. But without safety, you have nothing. Okay? All right. Love to know what our listeners think. That's Glazer's Gaze, first episode. There's going to be times, again, like I said, we got to go outside the box. we got to talk about things that are just not in the statutes, just not, you know, in, in the case law. we got to talk about things that are actually going on in our communities and our states, going on with the state legislators. These are important things to talk about. And again, with me, at least the way I think about it, with me and my family, what could possibly be more important? than safety. How do you feel, I mean, think about this, Rob, how would you feel if, God forbid, somebody in your immediate family was killed by somebody who had 50 prior arrests? How would you, how would you cope with that? How, as a person, how would you cope with that if, God forbid, your wife, your child was taken out by someone with 50 prior arrests? I don't think I don't think I'd be able to live with that. You know, be, it'd be, be hard enough to live with a death, but 50? You know, there's no way that um, I think you could remain sane after that, you know. I think you'd want some justification, you want some explanation, you want some revenge, quite frankly. So before we get there, let's make sure we have people in there that understand safety first. Safety first, period. Everything else comes second. 